let's get started right. and um, want to welcome <clears throat> all of you. Uh, and it truly is, it's always good, but it truly is good, especially today to be together, uh, to be able to share in each other's love and community uh, after all that we have been and are going through. So welcome. Don't know if there's anybody here visiting with us today, but if there is, we're so glad that you are a part of us today. And we pray that um, God's spirit will be with us in all things. The, uh, theme, the theme for the day or the thoughts for the day have to do with comfort, the comfort that God offers, um, and also unity and oneness of creation in all things. So I call your attention to this image and verse from the seventh chapter of Micah, and also the centering thought from the Apostle Paul. As we center ourselves for worship, we will also be able to listen to the beautiful music of Nancy Wilkerpenny. Let us worship God. If Thou Art Near by Bach, and we know that God is near to provide us with that kind of beautiful music. Thank you, Nancy. You see now the call to worship, responsive call to worship, let us uh, together uh, in responsive way have this call to worship. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift your voice up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of the land, here is your God. See, the holy God comes with strength. God will feed his flock like a shepherd. God will gather the lambs in her arms and carry them in her bosom. Our opening hymn is Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Amen to that. And now may the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Peace of Christ, beloved. So we went, went, had, uh, we, we, we began with Bach, and now we switch to Aaron Copeland for our special music with Nancy Wilkerson. But wait, you say, I thought one person was playing and I heard two flutes. Well, you see, it's that's because <laughs> she I recorded, know. she recorded herself and managed to pull that off in such beautiful fashion. Thank you so much, Nancy. That was beautiful. Well, friends, <clears throat> I wonder if there is anyone beside me that's tired of words, tired of people speaking at us, being spoken at. So I wanted to give you a heads up. You all, have, we've been together for some years now, and you have a pretty good idea of what to expect from me in the homiletical event in terms of how long you're used to a sermon being about the same length every week, more or less. Um, but today it's different. There will be much fewer words spoken. And instead, there is going to be the chance to hear some beautiful music that I believe will speak to us in God's truth. Let us pray. Gracious one, we ask that you would be with us now, O oh God. Be with us so that the words that we hear and the words that are spoken and the music that comes to us from your eternal places will grant us comfort, hope, strength, and courage today. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Good friends, I am wondering about you today. I'm wondering how you are. The uncertainty of our common life and our individual lives is palpable. We are going through, as I look back on my ministry anyway, one of the very, very toughest times for us as a people, as people of faith and as people of this country. I would even use the word or the phrase existential threats. Existential threats to our country, our way of government that we have seen play out in this election. I mean, how exhausting has that been, friends? And now we have to endure the lawsuits. And an existential threat in another way to our very lives with this virus that we all live in this dramatic tension with, hoping we do not get it or that someone we love does not get it. And in addition to that, there are people in this congregation 
who are struggling for their life with illnesses and family members of some of us in this congregation who are struggling for their life with illnesses. It is so much. What can we count on in a time like this? Comfort, comfort my people, says God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Speak tenderly to Apostles Church. So let us be comforted. From Ephesians, with all wisdom and insight, God has made known to us the mystery of God's will according to God's good pleasure set forth in Christ. God's will is a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things into God, all things in heaven and all things on earth. And from the book of Colossians. For in Christ, all things in heaven and on earth were created. Things visible and invisible, all things have been created through Christ and for Christ. Christ is before all things. And in Christ, all things hold together. Christ is the beginning. For in Christ, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through Christ, God was pleased to reconcile to God's self all things, whether on earth or in heaven. Beloved, I don't know if you could keep track of that, but I'll, I, I have counted up and there were 10, that is 10 times the word all was used in those scriptures. The Greek word panta, meaning everything. Unity. Oneness. Beloved, my message to us today is that through it all, all that we're going through, all that our lives bring to us, there is a reality, a higher power that gathers everything up in loving arms that holds everything together, that comforts us, and that promises all will be well. Thank you, God. Thank you for the church where we can come when we are exhausted and afraid and needing hope. Beloved community, what would it be like for us without the church? The church is where we come to be grounded in and held by these truths. And I ask you then to please give generously this month in your pledges and tithes to support this precious place. As we close with words now, bring, I invite you, your hopes into the next part of this worship, your hopes for a fairer and a just world. And also bring your fears of the rampaging virus or of an illness that threatens life. The oneness of creation, friends, means that each one of us has a place. Each one of us is connected to the whole. That no matter how terrified we get, no matter how confused we feel, no matter how uncertain life seems, no matter even the threat to our very life, none of us can ever be lost. I have music for you now to end. For me, with this piece of music, I needed to hear it two times. And so I'm going to play it for you two times. And in both the music and the video that comes along with it, that which has been fractured 
That word makes sense, doesn't it, beloved, in terms of our life now. That which has been fractured comes together as one. And you will experience in this music and visual event the truth of God that we are all one. All of us are one. Here are the lyrics. May we sing together always. May our voice be soft. May our singing be music for others. And may it keep others aloft. Sing gently. Always sing gently as one. May we stand together always. May our voice be strong. May we hear the singing always. And may we always sing gently. Always sing gently as one. Oh God, I ask you now that this music will lift us and bind our souls to you and to each other.
may our fractured world become one in God's love. Speaking of a fractured world, one of the places that we at Apostles have recently been very intentional about is the subject of racism, systemic racism. Emily Salter and Tom are both members of our task force on ending systemic racism and also part of the Presbytery's task force. And Emily now is going to share in a minute her mission about some of our work. And I think she'll probably tell you that this is going to be an ongoing uh, regular kind of report back to the congregation. Emily, we appreciate your work in this and we look forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you. Uh, that song was certainly um, a great lead in to what I was going to talk about today. I don't know if I'm showing up or not. I think maybe I have this on the wrong view. Do I have this on the wrong view? We can see you. You can see me. Okay, great. I just can't see myself. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I don't really need to see myself. Um, so the oneness of all creation, and that means people, that means the trees, that means the flowers, the plants, the sky, the water. So today, um, I'm going to share a little bit about this spiritual pilgrimage that at least 10 of us are on in our church. And I wonder if you notice that a lot of us at PCA are fixers and doers. And we want to fix things immediately, like maybe tomorrow, at the latest next week. You need food? Great. I can fix that. I'll take some food over to Open Door Pantry or to 360 Community Food Banks once a month. Need gifts for families at Christmas time? Great, I can fix that. I'll get some gift cards for gas and gifts for kids and run them over to 360 Communities the next week. Need help with the book fair next door at Gideon Pond? Great. I can fix that. I'll sign up for a shift one evening. Need to get rid of racism? Great, I can fix that. I'll, mm. wait a minute, how do we fix racism? Where do we begin? How do we begin? What, you say uh, we need to listen to them first? Those last questions many of us have asked again and again, especially since early June when George Floyd was murdered right here in our own city. The short story is that about 10 of us decided to join the Presbytery's anti-racism spiritual pilgrimage, which started in early September. And we committed ourselves to this one year privilege or a journey to a sacred place. This journey is very deliberate. Each of us, each week, read, we listen, we pray, we journal, we contemplate that special topic of the week, slowly, step by step, digging in to the histories, the cultures, the lifestyles, as told from the BIPOC, that's Black, Indigenous, people of color from their point of view. This journey is intentionally spiritual. It's grounded in the bedrock of our faith. So this morning, I'd like to give you an example of what we're doing, of something within this uh, period that we've already gone through that spoke to me. I think it was the second week of our, our, our readings. And and we're studying the spiritual practice of humility. And the Bible verse that we had for that week was Romans 12, 3, which I'm not going to read now, but you can go back and look for it. And this comes through the Ojibwe story of the Honorable Harvest. 
So I'll read that to you now. Kind of close your eyes and picture yourself out in the woods somewhere around anywhere here, maybe in Murphy Hanrahan Park, maybe in Clear Lake, maybe in the North Shore. Just think about it. When my basket holds enough leeks for dinner, I head home. Walking back through the flowers, I see a whole patch of snake root spreading its glistening leaves. And this reminds me of a story told to me by an herbalist I know. She taught me one of the cardinal rules of gathering plants. Never take the first plant you find, as it might be the last. And you want that first one to speak well of you to the others of her kind. That's not too hard to do when you come upon a whole stream bank of colt's foot, when there's a third and a fourth right there behind the first, but it's harder when the plants are few and the desire is great. Once I dreamed of a snake root and that I should bring it with me on a journey the next day. There was a need, but I didn't know what that need was. But snake root was still too early to harvest. The leaves wouldn't even be up for another week or so. Well, I guess there was a chance it might be up early somewhere, maybe in a sunny spot, so I went to look in the usual place I picked those medicines, said my friend. The blood root was out and the spring beauties too. She greeted them as she walked past, but saw none of the plants she sought. She stepped more slowly, opening her awareness, making her whole self into a halo of peripheral vision. Nestled at the base of a maple on the southeast side, the snake root made itself visible, a glossy mass of dark green leaves. She knelt, smiling, and spoke quietly. She thought of her upcoming journey, the, the empty bag in her pocket, and then slowly rose to her feet. Though her knees were stiff with age, she walked away, refraining from taking that first one. She wandered through the woods, admiring the trillium, just poking their heads up, and the leeks. But there was no more snake root. Well, I just figured I'd have to do without. I was halfway home when I found I'd lost my little shovel, the one I always use for digging medicines. So I had to go back. Well, I found it all right. It's got a red handle, so it's easy to find. And you know, it had fallen from my pocket right into a patch of the root. So I talked to that plant. I addressed it just like you would a person whose help you need, and it gave me a bit of itself. When I got where I was going, sure enough, there was a woman who needed that snake root medicine and I could pass on the gift. That plant reminded me that if we harvest with respect, and honor, that plant will help us. So join us after worship. We're gonna have a little adult forum where we can talk about this story and others and ask questions, give your ideas. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emily. That was very beautiful and very indicative of the kind of um, multi, <laughs> Uh, it comes at you from so many different ways. The readings we're doing, um, challenging our imagination and challenging our way of life, um, as you could see from that that Emily shared. So as she said, there'll be more to come and I hope you'll uh, join in a discussion after worship. We come now for our time for prayer concerns and celebrations of the people. Um, so I will... Uh, uh, ask if there are any of you that have prayer requests that you'd like to share. If there are no others, um, Tessa, you can put up this week's uh, Lord's Prayer, and we will conclude our prayer time in unison. Let us pray together. O birther, father, mother of the cosmos, 
you create all that moves in light. Carve a space for your name to live. Create your reign of unity now through our fiery hearts and willing hands. Let all wills move together in your vortex as stars and planets swirl through the sky. Grant what we need each day in bread and insight. Let each heartbeat release the weight of our mistakes and others' guilt. Let us not be deceived by false illusions, but free us from what holds us back. For from you comes the strength to act and the creative force in the universe that renews itself endlessly. Amen. Friends, um, I think you uh, know that um, we are uh, this month thinking about stewardship. I mentioned that briefly in the sermon. Um, and we also have some uh, members who this month will speak to us about stewardship. And today, Chris Baddeley uh, is doing that. So Chris, we're glad to have you talk to us. Thanks, Pastor. Um, our theme this year for stewardship is family of faith. Uh, Don and I raised our kids at PCA, and it's really been our, our community uh, since moving from Chicago to Burnsville uh, 20 years ago. Um, this is our community. We're really interconnected. And I think as you, you know, participated in the joys and concerns, as we do that every week, you realize that we all are all interconnected. It really does take a village. Um, I wanted to give you a couple of vignettes from um, our time with PCA talk about what family of faith has meant uh, to my family. Um, many of you know we've got two sons, Sean and Tom, that we uh, um, raised at PCA. Um, we're involved in logos, the music programs, uh, we enjoy the fellowship, the possible groups, but um, I remember one time when Tom was making the transition from elementary school to junior high and he he was very panic stricken. He said the, 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 the change from elementary school to junior high is the biggest change you make, except when you go to college, because you have to change classes, you have a locker, etc. So we were at Valley Middle School um, three days before school started. He had a locker assigned to him and he was trying to master the combination um, and just struggling. I was able to do it quickly and I couldn't get him to sort of get into the groove on working that combination. And uh, as we're sort of struggling, um, Barry Kaplan and Brandon Kaplan came up and said hello. And Brandon connecting with Tom was what it took to break the ice and suddenly all the, the pieces fell into place. and. Um, Tom made that transition. And he also made the most difficult transition from high school to college, but that's another story. <laughs> uh, this year uh, in January, uh, we relocated my mom from the uh, rivers to Augustana region. And um, my mom's from Pioneer Stock. She will put down roots anywhere and bloom where she is planted. Uh, so the unease around this move was probably more on me than it was on her. Um, but I remember the day that we were uh, getting her moved in and we bumped into Mary Peak in the lobby. And I was suddenly overcome by this peace that passes all understanding. <laughs> um, my mom moved in January. They immediately shut down for the flu. They opened up for maybe a week and then they were shut down for COVID. But that connection with Mary Peak has really been invaluable uh, to, my, to my mom and to my family. I've got four brothers and there isn't a month that goes by that one or more of them say, thank God for Mary Peak. So mm -hmm. um, we're a family of faith. This is a really special congregation. Um, we're on a mission that's centered there in the headquarters for ministry. And we've got a long and unbroken tradition of fellowship and really 
those of us that are in the church today are standing on the shoulders of those families that came before us. And um, we have a tradition of reaching out and connecting with others. Um, it takes a village. And we remain, although virtual, a family of faith. So during this stewardship time, I hope you um, do count your blessings and remember um, the church. Um, to close, uh, I'd like to give you a financial update. Um, for those of you that uh, pledge, um, and that's most of us, we are a very uh, pledge-centric congregation. Um, I'm happy to report that 96% of our pledges have come in on time and we are, um, you know, we're continuing to um, fund the church and follow through on our commitments. Uh, so I really thank you all for your fidelity during these challenging times. Um, the statements are gonna go out in the mail next week. I thank Jim Peterson for putting those together and the statements will come with a pledge card and a letter from pastors. So um, when you get that, please check your progress uh, year to date and um, thoughtfully and prayerfully uh, dig deep in your commitment for 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. That was very helpful. Let us respond to Chris's sharing with the uh, prayer of dedication. T Tessa will put that up. So let us uh, pray together. Small and large gifts we give back to you, O God of all given things. May they be blessed. May we use them to keep our promises to you, promises given from us who are given, uniquely designed for your calling. Amen. We now come to the time for announcements. Um, and um, I don't um, know if Julie Amaker is with us today. I think she is. And I, I didn't ask her ahead of time to do this. So she may just remain silent and I would totally understand. But two weeks from today, we have a very special uh, experience in worship with Tesfa. And I didn't know if Julie would like to share any of the details about that that she knows. And I am here. Oh, there you are. Um, yeah, so we are starting our sharing for our anti-racism pilgrimage today, as you heard from Emily a little bit earlier. And then we're going to have some conversation about it after the service. And we're going to try to do this every other week. And so in two weeks on St. Cecilia Sunday, which is the patron saint of music, Tespa Wanda Magniu is going to be joining us. And he's going to be, I think, the bulk of the service. We have yet to work out all those details. But he's going to be talking about um, how music inspires us to do more. And Tespa is an assist, uh, assistant professor at St. Olaf College now. And one of the courses he teach, teaches is music and social justice. So he'll have a lot to say. So be sure to join us again in two weeks. Thank you so much, Julie. Are there other announcements? I have one. Okay, hey Doug. Good morning, Al. Um, on November 14th, uh, Commissioner Bishop of the Minnesota P Pollution Control Agency will make uh, the final decision on one of the last remaining permits for the Line 3, three pipeline. Uh, if she approves the permit, uh, construction will begin almost immediately. Uh, it's uh, line three is a new pipeline that is to replace an existing pipeline and it runs through, uh, crosses the Mississippi a couple of times and it, and it crosses three major watersheds in the Minnesota area. Um, she faces uh, immense pressure from Enbridge to approve the permits. And I believe that those permit, that uh, pipeline is not in, in our best interest. Uh, so I guess I'd ask you to add your voice to disapprove of line three. Uh, you can contact uh, MPCA and Commissioner Bishop. Uh, there's a link in the e-blast uh, for sending a, basically it's a canned email 
that voices your uh, opinion to for asking her to reject line three. Thank you. And Doug, does that uh, the, the thing in the eblast also has a phone number, or is it just the? It's it's just a link. Okay. Uh, I can provide a phone number or phone numbers as well if if people want to make a phone call. Okay. Uh, but the link in the in the eblast takes you to a page that uh, you can read the read the letter, and basically it's just a click to sign it okay. with your name and your contact information. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Doug, and thanks for your work. Are there other announcements? No other announcements. All right. Uh, I'd like to um, offer the benediction now. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and community of the Holy Spirit be and abide with each one of us this day and all of our days together. And let all God's people say, Amen.